I occasionally get asked by fans how tall I am, and the answer is... Just about one B-flat tuba. Hey there everybody, this is your host Sam here from Samuel Plays Brass. Hope you're all doing well today. To all the old faces in the audience, welcome back. And to any new faces, welcome aboard. I hope you'll stick around because we got a very special review today on this Besson B-flat British Brass Band style tuba. Try saying that one five times fast. <laughs> A friend of mine in the local British brass band let me borrow this instrument to do a review on, so we're going to try and make some sense of it today. On the bell, we have stamped 50 Medals of Honor, the Besson logo, London, Paris, New York, and Made in England. This is an English Besson, as opposed to the French Bessons that many of us will be familiar with, and the serial number is a little bit confusing. English Bessons are notoriously tricky to track down, and so you have to actually use the boozy serial numbers, which, uh, don't ask me why that is, because I couldn't tell you. But according to the Dave Worden website, this instrument should be from around 1966, and we're not going to question it too much. It does look to be 50 or 60 years old, so it sounds about right to me. Uh, you can correct me if you want in the comments. We'll take a tour around the instrument, starting with the mouth pipe and mouthpiece receiver here. They are cantered up a significant distance from the valve section, meaning I cannot have this tuba balanced on my lap, otherwise the mouth pipe will be at eye level. Evidently, this tuba was not designed for people who are five foot four in height, because I have to have this tuba sitting cattywampus on the corner of the chair, and I have to sit cattywampus behind it, and kind of arch my back pretty, uh, or actually, what's the opposite of arching your back? I have to stretch out my back quite rigidly, which is not great for excess tension in my playing, but eventually, I get up to the proper level to actually play the instrument. Going past the lead pipe, we have the valve section here with three piston valves up top and a fourth down here, which is typically actuated by the left index finger. I sometimes use my middle finger. It's occasionally a little bit more comfortable, but I, I try and do the proper thing if I can. And these three plus one piston valves follow the compensating tuning system where we have these primary first, second, and third valve slides here. And on the back of the instrument, we have the fourth valve tuning slide down here. But we also have these extra loops of tubing. When you press the first valve and the fourth valve together, not only does the air go through the normal first valve slide and the fourth valve slide, it goes through this extra loop here. Similarly, second and fourth valve, it'll go through the normal two slides and this extra little nub here. Third and fourth, it'll go through this slide here in addition to the other two. And this system, the compensating system, ensures that some of your low notes are more in tune, won't require alternate fingerings, and, additionally, you'll only need four valves to go chromatically up from the open uh, pedal fundamental as high as you possibly care to go. The American solution to this is often five or six valves. Uh, typically, F tubas will have four on the right hand and two in the left hand up here, and C tubas will have four out here and a fifth rotor in the thumb. That is a little bit confusing at times, so the British system is much more straightforward in terms of fingerings. You have your middle F and you have your low F. You have your middle E, low E, middle E flat, low E flat, D, D, D flat, D flat, etc. So the fingerings are really straightforward on the British system. The trouble is often a little bit of added resistance or sort of a stuffy sound down there. And uh, that's sort of unavoidable on most of these things. Compensating euphoniums suffer from the same foibles. It's just up to the player to sort of navigate that and figure out what system works best for them. Depending on the genre they play, that will heavily influence their choice of tuba and you don't typically see too many of these in American ensembles. So my immediate observations are that this tuba is pretty clear throughout the entire register there. All those notes are pretty easily accessible despite the general inherent stuffiness of the compensating system. Having to reroute the air through the valves multiple times is usually not a good thing, but 
In this case, maybe it provides just the right amount of resistance that I'm not killing myself for the low notes. In any case, the, the very lowest ones with fourth valve down and some of the lower fingerings actually speak fairly well. Now, they work a lot better on my shifted embouchure, and I think in general, British wrap tubas kind of bring out the barkiness in your shifted embouchure. They really make it a rowdy sound, but it does project well, admittedly. I'm surprised I can even get the last C and B flat, uh, C and B natural on this instrument, but they're actually reasonably accessible. I'm, I'm quite into the low register on this thing. In this instrument's gig bag, there were two mouthpieces, which I figured would make for a fun experiment. So in my right hand, I've got the Bach Corporation 18. It's a very standard tuba size and fairly cavernous. And in my left hand, I've got the Bach Corporation 25, which should in theory be a little bit smaller. It certainly looks to have less cup and more rim, certainly a rounder rim. And the owner says it's better for E-flat tuba than for B-flat, but he left both in the bag for me to mess with, and I figured it'd make a good experiment to see which responds better on the tuba. So we'll start out with the 18. And then we'll transition to the slightly smaller 25. Here they are up close. Size-wise, we've got the 18 in my right hand again and the 25 in my left. It's not a super perceptible difference, and certainly the playing experience is fairly similar, and the sound is as well. The 18 feels a little bit roomier, and it feels maybe a little bit more comfortable, but then again, on tuba, I am sometimes partial to smaller mouthpieces just because they don't feel quite as cavernous. This Besson is the first compensating tuba I've played, but it's not the first British rap tuba I've played. Now when I say British rap, I mean when I stand the instrument up, everything is pretty much up and down vertically. Bellus obviously facing up and the valves for the most part are just up and down. The slides are all vertical for the most part. Pretty much everything is just straight up and down in a very linear fashion. A lot of American tubas will have front action valves and things are at a lot stranger of angles. Rotary tubas are the same way, they've got slides sticking out in different directions and of course the valves are on sort of the front of the instrument rather than being up here facing upward. And this comes with its own sort of set of ramifications. I bring up other British wrap tubas, namely the Yamaha YBB321, the main difference being an inline fourth valve rather than a compensating fourth valve, because it feels as though the wrap of the tuba for me as a player has more to do with my experience on the tuba than any sort of branding. Now, I say that with a caveat, this Besson is definitely nicer to play than GU's YBB321 just because that's an intermediate like school instrument, very much so, and this is like a really high-end instrument, and I certainly enjoy playing this one, but what I find about the British rap and the sort of sharp angular feel it comes with is things tend to sound pretty hostile on it. It plays alright softly, and you can get a decently loud sound out of it, but there also exists kind of a ceiling, a volume ceiling that you can't seem to get past very easily. The whole instrument feels a little bit stuffier than some other tubas. And it's just, it seems to have an angry sound, a hostile sound, if you will, in my hands. I've heard people sound just great on these tubas, of course. The owner of this tuba sounds just splendid, but I unfortunately don't. It seems that I, as a player, just do not meld very well with these British ramp tubas. And my experience has consistently been front action, uh, rotor, and especially piston tubas give me the most forgiving nature, I suppose. This instrument is tough for me to play. I'm constantly having to take the mouthpiece off my face and start over because I'm getting double buzz or just a really yucky, yucky tone quality. And it's very tough to center things. People talk about the resistance of the fourth valve all the time with compensating instruments. I feel like the real elephant in the room for me is not that, which physics says it should be because of some of these sharper bends around back. It's the sharper bends elsewhere on the instrument. Comparatively speaking, the low register does not feel stuffy for me on this instrument. Not particularly, anyway. Not more so than any other tuba. In fact, the low notes are fairly easy to reach. It's the middle register that does seem to stuff up on me a little bit and kind of almost not take my air in the way I want it. I'm like, you know, the shut up and take my money meme. That's kind of how it is, you know, take my air. It seems that this instrument kind of fights it a little bit, which is interesting. And in general, British raps seem to do that for me. So I've had very interesting experiences with British raps overall. But with all that said and whatnot, I do like the feel of this instrument compared to other British raps I've played. It's just a little bit of a design factor that I have a lot of trouble getting past. At least from my perspective as a player, this is definitely not one of the darker tubas I've played. I think that tends to go to the rotary tubas, 
but that may be ironic to some people because a lot of people associate the British Brass Band with a dark sound. It's not necessarily the case, and often I find that this rap makes it really hard to play with a dark sound. Natively, I would say for me, this tuba sounds fairly bright, especially in the low register where despite having a very big and boomy sound, it doesn't have as much roundness as I would like to it. Um, it I mean, it's kind of fitting, right? Sharp, angular design. I sort of get a sharp and angular sound to match it. And it's tough to do otherwise. There are some tubas that maybe are a little bit more flexible in terms of the tones you can produce, but this one seems to have a, a, a greater emphasis on what I call the blat factor, um, where it's very easy to blat on the instrument. I mentioned a hostile tone quality. That's what I'm talking about when I say the blat factor. But in general, the tuba does play fairly well in the softer dynamics. I feel like the resistance gives you a little bit of support to ride on when you're playing softly. It's just a little bit tough to play loud with a good, dark sound. Having said what I've said about the sound of this instrument, I really do find the full register pretty easy to access, all the way from the pedals to probably F or G above the bass staff. It's all very accessible on this tuba. The notes sort of just pop out if you figure out the sort of notch to play in. It's just a question of getting into the notch, which is pretty tough for me, honestly, on the British reps and on tubas in general, if we're being honest. But it is a really, really fun instrument to play, and those several octaves are all pretty much available to you as you need. I'm honestly still a little surprised by how little resistance I encountered, contrary to my expectation, in the fourth valve register. Of course, it's there's no such thing as a really great B natural on a B flat tuba, so the fact that I was even able to hit those notes kind of surprised me, and honestly, it was it's a pretty satisfying instrument in that sense to play. So bearing in mind that I am by no stretch a tuba player, and never will be, and all I can do is fart around on this thing, and also that I'm not a British tuba player moreover, and this is a style of tuba that takes a fair amount of acclimating to in order to play well, I hope you enjoyed this little review. It's definitely been a fun one to film, and you know, it's important that I'm honest in my evaluations about what I like and don't like about these instruments, but Overall, despite the mixed things I've said, I really, really do love playing on this tuba and I'm going to be sad to give it back. But it's been a fun ride. I hope you've enjoyed this review as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you did, consider leaving a like and a comment down below and consider subscribing if you aren't already. It's an easy way to stay up to date with my content and it's a small gesture with a huge impact on the channel. That's what keeps me going is seeing loyal fans who come back to the channel. So. Thank you for all the support as of recent. This has been the Best in 50 Medals of Honor B-flat British Brass Band Tuba, and until next time, we'll see you on the flip side.